Hi everybody. In this video render video, we want to take a look at why absolute beginner renders tend to look bad. We'll look at several different reasons why absolute basic beginner interior renders don't tend to look good. And hopefully that can help you going forward, make your renders look a little bit better. This video is aimed primarily at absolute new users, those who are just doing interior rendering. We'll use D5 Render, but the concepts will apply to Lumion, Enscape, Twinmotion, and really V-Ray. Let's go ahead and take a look at some absolute beginner student projects, and I'll show you sort of some of the issues present. All right, so here we are, everybody. And as I said, this video was primarily intended for absolute beginners to interior or just architectural rendering in general. And that's whether you're an architect or an interior designer or whatever your background is. You've just started doing architectural or interior renders, and your renders are looking very, very basic. This is the type of student project that you're probably kind of familiar with, or maybe this is the standard your renders are at. Now, I assign, usually as our second project in our rendering, uh, to a, basically a black and white room. Now, a black and white room is picked for a number of reasons. One, it's a simple color scheme. And most students, particularly mine or primarily high school, understand what a bedroom should look like. And at this point, this is usually their second experience in an actual rendering engine. We've maybe rendered a chair, but this is their first actual project. And you can kind of see here, you can tell it's absolutely a beginner's work. I want to show you another one as well. Just pop over to a different one. You can kind of see they share an awful lot of similarities, but they also share a lot of the same issues. But let's balance back here first, because I think this is a slightly better beginner example. So you'll notice quite a number of things. Firstly, it doesn't look hyper-realistic yet. A lot of the technical nuance isn't available to the students just yet. And setting up lighting at this point is really just trying to get outdoor lighting coming in. And you can kind of see it looks basic. And then our question is, but why does this render look basic? When you're first doing interior renders, and to some degree for exterior renders as well, quite simply, you just haven't been exposed to either reference material, or you just haven't seen a lot of really amazing renders from other people online. Quite simply, this, when you're first starting out as a student, looks good to you because you've no real other frame of reference. Quite simply, it's a sort of cognitive distortion. You think it's amazing because it is yours and it's your first one, and you think this resembles an actual room. Now, it doesn't for a couple of reasons that we'll get to, but the main issue with beginners when you're just starting out is just looking at your work and going, I think this looks great. So basically, the first issue is really just kind of getting over that idea. And I want to show you an example of mine. All right, so you can see here, this was one of my earlier, earlier, earlier renderings. I've been doing this for quite a while now at this stage. This, you know, hopefully looks a little bit better than the other one. But for the most part, there are still some major beginner kind of issues that are pressing in this one. The point I want to make here is that everyone effectively is going to start somewhere. And if your renders are looking very basic at the start, don't worry. So does everyone else's. Now, the rate at which your renders will improve is going to depend on a lot of different factors, and hopefully this video will help with that. But the point I'm trying to make here is, you know, everyone starts somewhere. Oftentimes, the first time students do renders like this, it's something they neglect. They'll set up the materials, and maybe they'll get the lighting kind of looking okay. But it's the actual field of view of the camera that will really kind of make the image look a lot better. Oftentimes, programs like Lumion and then Twinmotion the default focal length is often set to something closer to 15 millimeter camera. Now, this is really awesome if you're doing buildings. So you can see here, if we pop back outside, let's take a look at the camera settings here. Now, as it currently stands, if we go to one of our stored images, you can see that the focal length of about 15 is actually really good for showing off buildings. It just makes them look a lot better. And you can actually go to like here in D5, it's going to be under camera. And we're going to turn on basically two point perspective. 
in Lumion, you can do this under the effects, two point perspective, and under twin motion, it'll be under parallelism, usually under the camera settings. The point is here, this field of view, this lower like 15 to 25 millimeter field of view looks really good for exteriors, particularly if you want them to look more majestic. But when it comes to doing interior shots, so it still doesn't look very good. Now back in the house, let's just look at the difference. You can see the focal length is set to 15 millimeters right now. If you move the camera back, you're getting kind of this increased stretch and distortion in the image. That's often one of the reasons why those interior renders just won't look good. Generally, I recommend my students, you know, a little bit further on, really sort of just start putting the millimeter focal length to about 25 for interior shots and then start going upwards from there. You're going to end up most likely with something closer to 33 or 35 millimeters, but sometimes depending on the situation, you can even go higher than that. But the main thing here is make sure the focal length is set much higher than the default. It sort of brings you into the room. Between that and the parallelism, it'll actually straighten your edges quite a bit, and it'll make the render look a lot better. The third reason your beginner renders won't look very good is a distinct lack of interior design knowledge. Now, this is somewhat to be expected, but a lot of people, whether you're doing this, you know, coming at architectural rendering from a different perspective or coming at it from a 3D background, or you're coming at it because, uh, you know, it's a part of your college course for your architectural degree or your landscape architecture degree or whatever the reason is, oftentimes these things particularly the interior design stuff, is not going to be covered because it is its own separate field, and rightfully so. It's an incredibly challenging field to work in. But if you're just starting out doing interior renders, you actually don't generally have a good knowledge of really just the layout of a room, the organization of a room, the spatial awareness of a room, the color schemes, the tones, and the textures that go along with rooms. This is evident on the render on the left. It just feels sort of flat and lifeless. And even my early days render on the right, there's no real cohesion or sense of actual design. It's just stuff being placed because, again, you have that sort of cognitive bias there where this is how you think things actually should be. But it's not how rooms are actually decorated or interior designed. My suggestion here is Udemy. I recommended this in one of my other videos before. Find a Udemy course, uh, particularly one on interior design. Find one that's current, that gets continually updated. I'll link out to the one I use, which is by Erica Fogelman. Follow those courses. Learn about interior design. Learn about the placement of objects, the interplay of tone and color and texture and materials, and learn about the styles. If interior rendering interests you, it's not really work. It's just adding more tools to your toolkit. The next point that I want to make pertains to what I've generally been referring to recently as the stuff and the details. So really what that means is this is again an absolute beginner. Like I said, this is project like two in twin motion. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was Lumion at the time. And take a look at, this was, you know, first semester kind of work. Take a look then at a shot like this which is, again, similar skilled student in the second semester. So they've been doing this a bit longer. And this was about the time that we switched, obviously, from Lumion, you can see that issue there, to twin motion. And um, you'll still notice, though, even though they're both student projects, there is obviously a big discernible difference. And one of the reasons that this render looks better, not just because of Lumion's path tracer or the handling of light and blah, 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 and all that, it's because of the amount of stuff and the level of detail. This room looks empty because it is both structurally empty and devoid of objects. In other words, it doesn't feel real. It, it kind of feels like when you go to a furniture store and you've got like these, basically these like fake rooms that are just one wall and there's some like a bed and some stuff in front of it. It just doesn't feel tangible. Then you bounce over here and you've got for example, context, you've got stuff outside the actual window. Um, you know, it's just not much, it's green trees and plants and stuff. 
but there is actual content outside the window. You've also just got far more content within the actual room. It feels like a tangible, viable place. And as such, when you see it, your brain kind of goes mentally, yeah, like this, this could be a thing. Now, it's still student projects. There's still some issues. Obviously, you can see some, this is a SketchUp bed, and you can see where the texture mapping is just not correctly done. And you can see some, we've got some geometry cutting through. But all in all, as student projects go, this is just a much better interior render. Part of that is just experience and time, but part of it is just more awareness of how things should actually look. And I'll show you an example from my own work. So this was actually my last ever sort of Lumion render. Uh, at the time, this was switching from like 11 point, Lumion 11.5, I think, switching outwards. And part of that was the limitations of interior rendering with Lumion at the time. But this, of all the stuff from beginner to whatever level I am at at this point, um, which is whatever, this was still my favorite render. And I could never figure out why this was my favorite Lumion render. And it's only recently I realized that it is because of the content. There's just stuff, and it looks more viable. The handling of light for Lumion at this point was still a bit shaky. You're trying to get as much light from outside in. But overall, I still like this image a lot, and I think it's because it looks like a kind of viable space, and there's just enough stuff, and the stuff is also in the right place, not just like thrown everywhere. But if we want to look at a, what I think is slightly a better example, here we have a, a more modern uh, D5 render, and you can see again, one of the reasons the room looks better is, hopefully the modeling is a bit better, I'd like to think over time that's gone a bit better, but more specifically, there's just more stuff in the scene, and that gives it this feeling of a viable, potentially livable space. And your brain kind of looks at it and then goes, okay, yeah, this is a more likely to be an actual place as opposed to an empty room. And the last reason why your beginner renders look like beginner renders is to do with post-production. Quite simply, this is in many ways taking usually still images, but you can do this with video too if you render out lots of still images individually, is to bring them into something like Photoshop or Lightroom or some other image editing software and effectively adjust everything about them, the sharpness, the values, the lights and the darks and whatever. And especially when you're just starting out, even if you produce a really nice, you know, render and you're very happy with it, it's still going to require post-production to make it pop or make it look a lot better. And oftentimes, you know, you'd be shocked how big the difference between pre and post actual renders look. And you can see here, we've got some really nice examples, I think, of just kind of like how you can change the look and the feel of your final renders. And understandably, post-production is... And for many people, a whole, absolutely a whole new thing. I mean, it's a thing you have to learn as well. We just don't know how to work Photoshop or other programs like it automatically. Now, I was kind of lucky because I did a lot of ZBrush creature sculpting back in the day. And I kind of, well, part of that was at the time having to use Photoshop to make your ZBrush renders look a lot better. Uh, that's going to change a little bit now, but some people still use that workflow and it looks really, really cool. Um, you know, there's some great artists out there who do that. And so at least I didn't have to learn Photoshop initially, but it's still is a, it's a different way of working with Photoshop. The post-production is kind of the hidden secret, I think, that a lot of really great studios and a lot of really good archivist artists have. And it's really just taking your image and hopefully adding mood and tone, and atmosphere, and light, and just sort of more fidelity to them. And I think that's sort of, when it comes to beginner stuff, that's often the, one of the pieces that is missing. Now, the last thing I want to mention is the other stuff that I didn't get to mention, which is going to be materials. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff like really that beginners don't get to do like, you know, correct materials, correct lighting. And I can see already in the comments section, people would be like, ah, you didn't talk about these things. We absolutely understand that, that you have to learn those as well. But hopefully these tips here will help to take, when you've learned how to apply materials and you've learned how to like put a big area light outside your window, 
Hopefully these tips and tricks will help a little bit. It's just bring your work from absolute beginner into, you know, intermediate or moderate user. But the other thing I also want to point out before we leave is I'm going to show you my uh, very first render. So this was, I think, my very, very first render. This was done back before the school even had an architecture or this program, and we were just sort of looking for something to use with SketchUp, oddly enough. But you can kind of see here, one on the left, just very basic Lumion render. And then the one on the right was done a little bit, probably six months afterwards. Uh, I had a bit more time to experiment and play around with and learn some stuff. Uh, you know, they're, they're beginner renders. The point I'm trying to make here with this is if your renders are looking, you know, a lot more like this and they're not where you want them to be, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, everyone starts somewhere. Now, you might be worried about maybe technology is going to pace ahead of you or maybe AI will come in and take over this. Look, actually won't. <clears throat> the vast majority of what we do is still going to be essentially manual. And with that comes other skills like an artistic eye and experience and appreciation of light and color and shape and form and all that good stuff. And so the last thing I want to mention is if your beginner renders are just looking like beginner renders, just keep going. Just keep rendering. Uh, learn everything you can possibly learn and just keep challenging yourself and growing. It's, um, you know, we make a lot about architectural rendering, but at, at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is you're trying to make as pretty or beautiful an image as possible. That's it. If you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it and hopefully you picked up something from it. And a uh, big thank you to all of you who have taken the time to subscribe and especially all those people who posted some really lovely comments over the last year because the Via Render channel, I think, is only about a year and a bit old at this stage. And um, we're currently at about 4,000, I think, subscribers. So, Wow. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.